Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Wilson, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. AM 630. Good morning, everyone. It is 737. Brian Wilson, Brian Neiman, Mary Catherine Hamm, we're all here today. and We are joined on the phone from Connecticut, Trevor Maddich. Uh, from a former Redskin player, uh, who's a long snapper of note, and 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 he's here to talk about the, this upcoming game. You know, it's the one and five Panthers versus the three and two Redskins. I left for one week, uh, Trevor, and well, what did you do? You went and let the Redskins lose. You were supposed to watch them while I was gone. I know. Well, that's what well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have left. You should know that you should only take vacations when the Redskins aren't playing, only in the off season. Well, let me, uh, just for the record, it was not a vacation. But we'll we'll <laughs> we'll we'll save that discussion for another day. All right. Look, you're going up against Cam Newton. Now, Cam Newton is a pretty good quarterback. He's a rookie sensation, but he's had nine interceptions this season. Exactly the same number as Rex Grossman, by the right. way. Yeah, how about that? The, yeah, but he has thrown for a lot of yards, though. The, that offense is sixth in the, in the league in total yards, and so he's moving the ball up and down the field, but those interceptions are stopping them. I mean, they lost last week to Atlanta, partly because he threw three interceptions in the fourth quarter, and so let's hope he doesn't fix that against the Redskins. Well, you, you've talked about how uh, Beck needs to be Mr. Stable, not try to be Mr. Hot Shot. Is it harder to keep that in check when you're up against Cam Newton, who's sort of flashier and more fun? Well, it's harder unless you discipline yourself to do it. See, that's what happened to Rex. That was the problem. Rex went out there and tried to make big plays and ended up throwing big interceptions. And so Beck, you know, he's got to learn that lesson. And so he may be tempted to go out there and try to match Newton yard for yard. That would be a mistake. What he needs to do is is be reliable, take what's there, make the short pass if it's safer than the long pass most of the time, let the defense win it. This is what we've talked about all year long. Rex violated the cardinal rule of this year's Redskins. For the quarterback, the punter is your friend. Punt, and it's a good series because the defense is good enough. So that's the lesson Beck needs to learn. And if he doesn't learn it, he's just an idiot. All right, what do you make of the decision to start Beck in place of Grossman? Was that the right move from Shanahan? Yes, it was the right move. Grossman had his chance over five games. Redskins have 11 turnovers. Grossman has a hand in every single one of them, mm-hmm. all of them. And so, so this was the right move. The players in the locker room want to win. They watch the tape as well, and they know that Grossman has kind of melted down. And also, at the end of the game, in the press conference afterwards, Grossman kind of melted down. Yeah, He went through all four of his interceptions with the press without being asked about it, and one of them uh, was really Fred Davis, the tight end's fault, because he didn't cross in front of the safety. And so the safety stepped up and, and intercepted what was otherwise a pretty good pass, but it was a bad route. Well, Rex needed to have said that uh, either nothing or that you know he needed to have made a better throw, even though it really was the receiver's fault. Instead, he pointed out to the press and all the world that that one wasn't his fault. It was Fred Davis's fault. Yeah, th- throwing your receiver under the bus, right. never a good thing. How much optimism should Redskins fans have with John Beck as the quarterback? I mean, let's be honest. If, you know, if it was a fair open competition in the preseason like Shanahan said it was, he lost out to Rex Grossman, who a lot of people don't have confidence in, and threw nine picks in his first game. And is a guy who's been around the NFL for a while and uh, is a little bit older and has never really gotten a real true chance in the NFL. I mean, what's the confidence level in John Beck moving forward? Yeah, it's, it's unknown. Uh, but if all he does is not throw it to the other team, it's probably better. What the Redskins have tried to do uh, this year, really the last couple of years, is build up the, the core of the team. You look at their draft choices. They drafted Trent Williams, left tackle, um, uh, Brian Arakpo, mm-hmm. and, and Ryan Kerrigan. Brian Kerrigan. All, they're building up the core of the team, which is important. And this year they did not go for a quarterback. And it's okay, because had they drafted a quarterback this year, then they wouldn't have been, especially high, they wouldn't have been able to take maybe Kerrigan or somebody like that. You know, some of these good players that they're building the core with. And if they bring in a quarterback next year, they'll be a much better um, 
you know, team around that guy. So right now, they're, it's kind of biting them because Grossman isn't what they expected him to be, that caretaker. Now Beck needs to show he could be that caretaker. No one really believes except Beck. And I, th- I think he's going to have to show people that he can scramble because he's going to be without his left guard, Corey Lichtensteiger, and without the left tackle, Trent Williams. Yeah, and this, this offensive line coming into the season, uh, we thought would be pretty solid if they could stay healthy. You know, they'd be okay. This is the problem, though. They stayed healthy the first four and a half games, and all of a sudden they're down to their depth. And then you're talking about depth that, that is very inexperienced. And so, yeah, scrambling will be important. And also getting the ball out of his hands will be important. So so now, before we didn't look at the offensive line as a source of, of a real problem, just not quite good enough to dominate, but they're okay. Now all of a sudden could be a sieve. Might not be, but, yeah, Beck will have to get on his horse. Uh, the Raiders traded for Carson Palmer, and they gave up a number one draft pick and a possibly another number one draft pick for him, which seems seems high to me. But the Redskins have been looking for that quarterback for quite some time. And now Carson Palmer isn't Donovan McNabb. He's, he's a little bit younger. I think he's you know a little bit better than Donovan McNabb at this point. Um, so the Redskins have made a play on him, or do you think they did in the offseason at least? I know the Bengals didn't want to trade him. But uh, what do you think of the Redskins' interest in Carson Palmer? Should there have been one? I, I think it shows the tremendous savvy on the Redskins' part to not do that because they would have had to have at least matched uh, the, the Raiders' two first-round draft choices for a veteran quarterback, and I think they're not a quarterback away. They still need to build up more places and to to to, to give up two first-round draft choices I think is one of the reasons that the Raiders – are the Raiders? <laughs> now they're actually having a good a good season this season, but they keep on impeding themselves in the long term. Look at the teams that consistently have been the 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 class of the league. Look at Pittsburgh and New England and, and really Philly, except for this year. What they do is they get young players at the expense of older veterans. Well, what the Raiders and the Redskins have done is they've given up the opportunity to draft younger players to get older stars. Right. All right let, me, let me phrase it this way. What's more important to have for an NFL franchise, a st- starting quarterback who is a franchise starting quarterback or a really good coach? What's better? What would you rather have? Oh, I'd rather have the franchise quarterback. Right. Yeah. yeah. But rather than a franchise quarterback, I'd rather have a dominant offensive line. See, I'd rather have a great yep. offensive line and a good quarterback than a, good, than a great quarterback and a good offensive line. I agree with you on that one. All right. Before I let you go, are they going to win this weekend? Yes, they're gonna they're gonna bounce back. They'll beat Carolina. I think they'll they'll confuse uh, Cam Newton and continue his series of interceptions. And we'll be well on our way to those ten wins that I <laughs> predicted early in the season. On your way, but Brian, you can't leave the studio again. You can't. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'll be right by my TV set. I promise. And marijuana is still illegal in this country. I just want to point that out to you. <laughs> well, as well, it should Whoa, be. Where'd that come from? Right. See you, Trevor. Thanks, Trevor.